Whoa, look at that handful. That's, that's a lot of worms right there. Guten gardening, everybody. Well, today I wanna to talk to you about our vermiculture setup. Specifically, I wanna to talk to you about the biggest mistake that I ever made with regard to our worm bin here at Guten Gardening. Now, for those of you who have never tried creating this black gold, these worm castings, which can be such an incredible part of the gardening experience, I, I wanna provide just a little bit of background to our own experience with these worm castings, with this vermiculture setup. And then I want to explain exactly what I did and how it almost cost us our entire setup. Well, that is to say it almost killed every single worm. Now, the first thing you should know is the first video ever, and it's now about 600 videos ago, but the first video ever here at Guten Gardening is <laughs> back when we were still Guten Yardening was our vermiculture setup video and it's actually this same setup now nearly three years later now when it comes to this vermiculture setup there's an awful lot to love in my opinion specifically because i think we're all in there are three different containers here all in for less than 30 dollars and we've had this setup again running for multiple years and since the summer of the first year, the end of the summer of the first year, we've actually had this inside the entire time. And we have it in the side in the area where we do the rest of our growing, as you can see down here by our green stalk right here, or one of our green stalks. And there's no additional bad smell or anything like that coming from this setup. And quite frankly, what's coming out of this? Oh, you can see one of our red wigglers right there fully fully happy with the amount of food in here but this is producing a good amount i would say I'm not going to say a ton because it does take some time but a good amount of worm castings in this setup and that is something that we've added to our indoor growing space our outdoor growing space and what it does it's not going to sit there and add a whole bunch of npk or anything like that that's not really the purpose of the castings there is some there but really the purpose behind this is to add life, to add those really important microorganisms to your soil, to your mix, to whatever you're growing, to really help with the performance of your fruits and vegetables. Well, let's look close down in here and see if we can find some worms and some other interesting stuff happening before I talk about that big mistake. But one thing I'm not gonna do in this video is talk too much about the setup itself. I've got a couple of other videos where we talk setup and so I don't wanna spend too much time on that. I, I just wanna see you know, what all's going on in here. You can see the really nice castings. Actually, that's something that, that deep brown, almost black color. I think that's why they call it that black gold. But I noticed something right here off to this side. Check this out. I must have thrown Yep, right there, the remains of, that's the tip of a sweet potato <laughs> that came in here. I'll tell you what, these starchy plants, this sweet potato has a desire to survive. This has been in the dark since I threw this in here. Oh, there's, look, I think there's another piece of one right over here. Well, no, that's something else. There's, you know, you get a couple seeds in here. It's not surprising that they'll start to germinate even in the dark but we're not in here to grow <laughs> we're not in here to grow plants although i think this one's pretty cool we've got just general kitchen waste from the vegetables that we've been growing take a look at this this is the stem of something and it's it's almost hollow inside because of what the worms have been doing in there just clearing it out just eating away but we're able to take that kitchen waste and transform it into something more useful a lot faster. I mean, truly, composting is amazing. We do a lot of composting, but these worms are so hungry, and I would say they're so prolific that we can get a lot out of here even faster. Look at this, this is the skin off of an avocado. So what I've got in here is I dig down in here. We've got some pretty good, pretty good castings toward the bottom. And it may look like I'm mixing things up here right now, and I am to some extent. I just want to show you how deep this goes. Right now, here at the top, I've got about, I reached my hand down in here, probably about seven inches deep. So 
I could actually be harvesting some of these. And in some of this, I've taken some old mix. You can see the, the perlite or vermiculite in here to some extent. I've I got some old potting mix I just throw in here as well. And I've got all of this that, you know, when in the next couple of months, I'm going to be bringing to my outdoor garden space. So what did I do? And you can see there's still worms in here. There's still plenty of worms in here, actually. Um, there is a nice little handful. What did I do that almost cost us our entire setup? That's such a good question, isn't it? Look at all these beautiful worms. I got my gardener in training here who, <laughs> who likes these worms too. I tell you what, that's something that I think is important. You know, make sure that your kids, if they're gonna be able to help you out, make sure they're not afraid of these critters that are in here that can really be beneficial to your garden. Are you afraid of those critters? No, well, that's a, a negative head shake. <laughs> so I've just taken out the top layer. So we have two different layers here. The top layer of our castings and underneath, you can see a really wet mix. And down in here, there's a whole bunch of worms and not just the worms. I can actually see a whole bunch of cocoons down in here as well we got a whole bunch of worms here on this bottom layer. And of course, I want to get these going up to the top. I want to put them in that top layer. They're down here. You know, if you, if you feed them, they'll move up anyway. But I want to get them out of this, this wet mix. But having that second tier means that underneath here, the leachate sometimes gathers here. That's the liquid. For those who don't know, the leachate is the liquid that they create as a part of this process. And we prevent them from being down the whole way into that leachate there. I've got most of them out of here by, by keeping that next layer down here. And actually, let me show you how much leachate is down in here. This has been about three months, maybe a little bit more since I've cleaned this out. You see my bricks here. My bricks are in about two inches. Maybe I would say about two inches of that leachate liquid. So I'm going to clear that out. Now that's a lot of liquid and you might think that the mistake I made was letting the liquid get too high and creating a problem where the worms could drown because that's a possibility. Now I'll typically just empty the leachate out into a bucket and then I'll take that, pour it right on the garden. But you can see pretty clearly, I mean, this is a substantial amount of leachate and it would be pretty easy for us to let that come up too high and cause a problem, drown the worms. But that's not what happened. I, I stayed on top of that, but what I did was, and I said this earlier, I put tons of different food scraps in here. They eat when they eat. It's pretty light. You know, I would say it's pretty hands off. Every couple, every week, every couple weeks or so, I'm putting some new scraps in here and they seem content. But last season, toward the end of the season, we had some extra tomatoes tomatoes that were going bad and, and we could save the seeds from them, but I didn't want to throw the tomatoes themselves out. So I put a bunch of tomatoes in here. Well, what happened as a result of that? I don't know why I didn't consider this. It's pretty obvious now, but those tomatoes, even if they're, they're smaller, they still have a good amount of liquid in them. And a couple days after I had thrown a decent number in here, I came down and it was a soggy mess. I mean, there was so much liquid in here that the I was terrified. I was terrified. It wouldn't drain. It had caused everything to it, the, the holes. Everything it was just so much. It couldn't drain out. And I looked in here and I saw quite a few worms that were dead. And nobody wants to lose. I mean, OK, yes, we could buy a thousand worms for about forty dollars. So it, you know, it is what it is, but nobody wants to lose all that progress. Nobody wants to go through that in, in a system like that. And so I came down, I took the worms out, I lifted the container up, I poured out as much liquid as I could. I added some potting mix in there. Again, just some old spent potting mix to try to dry things out. And very fortunately, enough worms survived that they could start rep reproducing and, and that was a key so they started reproducing i came down I, I i made sure to not add any additional moisture or a minimal amount 
of moisture until things had dried out a good bit. In retrospect, thinking about this, it's pretty obvious to me that I could have put a couple tomatoes in there, but I should have been way more careful. And so from our lesson here, I mean, it's not like we're necessarily limiting the things that we're putting in here beyond, I don't typically put onion scraps in here. I don't typically put citrus in here, but we do need to be a little bit aware of what we've got going in here because we want to keep this setup going year after year after year after year. Really, the only thing that I want to cause this setup to be finally finished is when the plastic itself is so brittle we can't use it anymore. And my hope is that that's quite a few years away. We've got a lot of worms in here. I got to actually get in here and feed them. Let's <laughs> see the, the uh, labels here from some plantain that we ate. Um, I got quite a few worms in here now. They did make it. They have been reproducing. That's what we want to see. And we've got a couple of other smaller setups as well. I think this is just really important for us to keep going. You can see the different ages of the worms in here. Some of the baby worms, these smaller worms in here. It's just so much fun, so easy to do. I mentioned we have a couple of other videos where we talk setup, where we talk a little bit more about this process. So I'll put those linked in the description so you can check them out. But it's something I definitely recommend you do is to try out worm bins. <laughs> Again, no smell. In fact, I would say it has a really nice smell to it. And it's pretty amazing how quickly they go through the food that you put in here. Well, hey, one of the benefits of our channel is that we can learn some of these lessons before you have to experience the pain. And that's what our video today was all about. Hey, if you've done your own vermiculture setup, you've built your own, you have a vermiculture setup, we'd love to hear about it. If it's something you're interested in or you have questions about, we'd love to hear about that too. And we'd be happy to answer from our own personal experience. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to give us a like, leave us a comment, Remember to share and subscribe, and most importantly remember, when you're with us, you are good to grow.